So how much money can you actually make from recruiting insurance agents? So I'm going to give you my personal experience right now. Hey, 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 it's Dave Duford here at Duford Insurance Group, where I train agents nationally to sell things like final expense and Medicare, both face to face and over the phone. Thank you for being here. And do make sure that you subscribe and like the video if you happen to enjoy this content. So the purpose of this video is to give you some insight on how much money you can actually make recruiting insurance agents. What I'm going to go over today is a couple of factoids here about how you make money, first of all, in selling or recruiting agents to sell insurance. Uh, the principle of scale, where the beauty of agency recruitment really comes in. And then also the downsides to recruiting as well, uh, because recruiting is not all rainbows and sunshine. You need to be well aware of the problems associated with recruiting uh, before you start recruiting, just to make sure it's a good fit. So first of all, let's talk about how you're paid when you recruit and build an agency. So the economic upside, the potential is in what we call override commission. You are making over and above, thus override, uh, of what the agent you recruit is at. So for example, if you're in the final expense business and I recruit an agent and they're at a 100% contract and I'm at a 120% contract, when that agent at a 100% contract makes a sale, I make the difference between my 120 and my 100%, their 100% contract. So the difference I make is a 20% override in first year commission based off of whatever the premium is. So while you don't make as much per sale, for example, than you do if you're usually selling face to face or over the phone with your actual insurance clients, the beauty of this business in point number two is there's a principle of scale of what you can do by building an agency and increasing your income from it versus what you could do on your own. You see, the problem with most insurance agents is they reach a maximum capacity on appointments to run and how much work they run to run and thus a, a ceiling on their income. And that can be a problem, of course, because if you work 40 appointments plus a week and you're grinding it out six days a week for 15 hours, eventually you get burned out you get tired of the business, you don't get to see your loved ones anymore, it can have some detrimental effects above and beyond uh, what your earnings, uh, as good as they could be, are. And this is why a lot of people get into recruiting. And what's nice is, is that you can take not just one agent that works uh, decently, but you can scale up your activity so that you have many agents, dozens, hundreds, even thousands of agents, where you take a small override percentage off of them, but there is the uh, factor of scale that happens that a lot of people making you a little bit in entirety adds up to way more than what you could do on your own. This is what I experienced in my insurance agency. Of course, I recruit insurance agents to sell final expense. I make an override every time my agents write a piece of business. Certainly the same for Medicare as well. I make an override on an agent that sells a Medicare policy. Likewise for other products like annuities, or mortgage protection or term insurance. And all of this has been built, been building since 2014, since I started my agency, until what now is like an, a, a huge tsunami of override commissions on first year production and on renewals now over many a years that come in consistently every single month, whether I actually work or not. And the sum total of all those overrides vastly is superior than me going out into the field or getting on the phone for 50, 60, 70 hours a week and grinding it out like you guys are, which is great, should be commended. And I have the opportunity to make a higher income by a huge multiple than what I ever could have done on my own while also keeping normal business hours and uh, having more of a lifestyle than I had when I was an 80 hour agent uh, many years ago. But like I said, it's not all rainbows and sunshines. There's certainly downsides to recruiting and I'm gonna hit on a couple of these right now so that you understand that this isn't some sales pitch to get into recruiting. It's not for everybody and it certainly comes with its fair share of risks. One of the biggest risks in recruiting insurance agents is you assume any sort of chargebacks that the insurance agent beneath you recruited don't pay. You essentially are co-signing on all of your agent's advanced debt. It's like you're co-signing on a credit card. And there are people who are dishonorable, who will not take care of their obligations and allow you to basically have it rolled up to you where it is now your responsibility. And while most chargebacks are small in size, there are circumstances where all agency recruiters who get big and rapidly grow experience people 
who charge back to the tunes of five figures plus on huge amounts of policies that simply laughs off the books that they couldn't handle. For example, I was talking to an agent on another YouTube channel who said to me that he had two or three agents that owed him 10, 15, even $20,000 in chargeback roll up because agents wrote a bunch of bad business just to make the money. There was one gentleman that was writing policies on people unbeknownst to them and committing white collar crime and is literally behind jail. And this guy, this agency builder still has to cover the costs. So be aware when you're getting into the recruiting game that you're going to be in a position where when you're recruiting, you're responsible for your uh, downlines uh, business and the quality of the business. And yeah, while well, you've got this upside for potential and uh, upside you know, commission opportunity, you also have a big uh, opportunity to lose big if you do a poor job of actually recruiting and you end up with bad apples. Another downside to recruiting is that effective recruiting also means you're going to be training your agents, right? And when you take your time out of the field to train your insurance agents, well, you take your time out of the field that you could be writing business, but you instead opt for that time to be training agents. Because if you recruit agents and you don't train them, you don't support them and get them up and running, guess what? They leave you. And all that opportunity to build this grand agency and great override income just goes away. So you're going to be forced in a position where you have to take time away from your personal production and spend more time on developing your people so that they become successful and then they can duplicate your success and then the override income comes. So it's something that takes time. Um, it took me three years approximately of full-time work before I went uh, pretty much out of the field entirely where I could depend on my override commissions to pay my bills. I could depend on, um, you know, I had and I had to have the time to go talk with agents and recruit them because my agency was blowing up and get really big. I, I just couldn't personally produce anymore. Uh, for some that I know of, it takes them uh, less than a year because they, they did everything right and they uh, did everything profoundly well and got up and running really fast. Others, it takes a couple of years. So understand this isn't uh, a sprint. It's a marathon for most. But don't give up on producing, even though you're going to have to pull back from it. Learn how to straddle both fences. You're going to have to do this for a while, and that may mean six-day work weeks for a long time in order before the, the commission from the override builds up and becomes easier to step away from personal production and have that income replaced by your agency development. Bottom line with recruiting, the type of money that you can make relative to most insurance products out there is vastly superior than one can make just simply selling the product. Uh, my income now is multitudes higher than even my best year selling final expense. And it wouldn't be if I did not diversify my income into agency building and focus on doing that instead of just personally producing. I hope you enjoyed this video on how much money you can make in building an agency and giving you some idea and inspiration on how to make it a reality. And of course, at the Ford Insurance Group, while we recruit and train agents to become top producers, we also train those agents who are producers that are decent to become agency builders. It's something that I'm working on as a longer term vision in my agency to duplicate now my efforts as an agency builder and those agents who want to duplicate and build an agency because I've been exactly where you are for many years now. I can speak to what it's like to build an agency and be a mentor in that regard as well as building agents. So if you're interested in building an agency, you like the idea of focusing on something like final expense, you like the idea of focusing on Medicare, either face-to-face -face or over the phone, I can definitely help build your agency. And if you're interested in learning more, simply go to daviddufour.com forward slash contact. The contact information is below or above in the links. And I do hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.